Pierre. And I'm Miss Ryan. Today we're going to learn about subsets of real numbers and properties of real numbers. So, a few things to remember as you get started with the videos. Remember that you should have a notebook out to write down things or you can use the link in the description below for a learning guide. And at any time, pause, rewind, rewatch. That's a very important strategy for watching videos to learn. Remember at the end of these, you should be able to tell us the subsets of real numbers and the properties of real numbers. Okay, let's get started. Real numbers! Hey, why don't we look at the subsets of real numbers? Okay, so let's pretend this box here is our real numbers or our real number land. Sounds good, so that means we need to start with the smallest subset. Let's go! Subsets of real numbers. Let's start with the smallest subset. This one's called the natural numbers. Now, natural numbers are kind of like in nature. They're the first numbers that you've learned. Like when you were a little kid or a little toddler and you were counting on your fingers, one, two, three, four, and so on. That's what our natural numbers subset are. Then we move up to whole numbers. You know, as we grow, we start to learn about, oh my gosh, there's not just one, two, three, four. Now there's this concept of none. Like, oh my gosh, I don't get any cookies when I misbehave, none, zero. So whole numbers, I like to emphasize whole numbers. So you remember that we start with zero and then we just move on to our natural numbers, one, two, three, four, and so on. And then of course, we are ready for even more. So then we look at our integers, integers. So in integer land, we have the whole numbers, we have that zero, the natural numbers, and the opposites of the natural numbers. So negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. So notice we haven't done anything with fractions yet. So it's time to move on to rationals. So when we get to rational, I like to keep in my head fractional because rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction. So if we go all the way back to our natural numbers, those can be written as a fraction. One over one, two over one, three over one, four over one, and so on. Whole numbers, integers, same thing. All of them can be written as fractions. So when I get to rational, fractional, we know that that includes the natural, the wholes, the integers, and now, it also includes fractions and decimals that can be written as fractions. So if the decimal ends or if it starts repeating, it can be rewritten as a fraction. So we have things like 1 half, 0.74, negative 0.2 repeating, and 3.7. So many others, of course. So once again, rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction. So if it's a decimal that ends or starts repeating, it can be rewritten as a fraction. Maybe jot that down. Rational, fractional a decimal that ends or repeats. Whew. All right, looks like we got it. We have the whole real number line. We have natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and our fractions, our fractional, rational numbers. Whew. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You're missing our whole subset of numbers over here, oh. irrational numbers. Well, you tell them about this. Okay, irrational numbers. I-R means not ear, so not rational, so not fractional. These are numbers that cannot be written as fractions, so they're decimals that don't terminate and don't repeat. So a really good example of that is pi. That's kind of why we wrote this with a, you know, a little squiggle, so we remember irrational pi. Another number is e, which we'll learn about a little bit later, um, and then any of our square roots that aren't perfect squares, so like square root of 2, square root of 5, and so on. Those are irrational, not fractional. Are we done now with real numbers? Yeah, I think we got them all. So the entire real number line, we have it. That's awesome. So let's try to make sure we have a way to remember all of these, because we have natural, whole, integer, rational, and irrational. So let's look at those letters. We've got N-W-I-R-I. -I. So, hmm, let's say N, like knowing something, so like K-N-O-W, so know when it's rational or irrational. Let's try that again. Know when it's rational, fractional, or irrational, not fractional. Know when it's rational, fractional, or irrational, not fractional. So here we have a pop quiz. Given the situation, which subset of real numbers does it belong in? Say I make cookies on Monday, and by Friday, I want to know how many cookies I have left. It would be whole numbers, whole numbers. Whole numbers start with zero and then go on to one, two, three, and so on. Because at the end of the week, maybe I have zero cookies left because I ate them all. Or I have one or two. Who knows? All right, let's try another situation. What about, like, the number of pencils I'm going to need for my classes? 
Yeah, especially for math class. Well, we know you're gonna need a pencil for math class, so we're going with natural. And no, we're not talking about you broke a couple and a half and stuff like that. So natural numbers, we're gonna need about mm, 17. Okay, so how about this situation? Say that I wanna get the best value when I'm ordering pizzas. I might do something like this. Um, we could figure out the square inches of the large and the square inches of the extra large and then how much each one costs and I could figure out the cost per square inch and then buy the one that's the best value, obviously. So if I'm finding the area of a pizza, which subset of numbers would that be? Oh my goodness. You'd be irrational. <laughs> one, because you're crazy in doing that math, but also because to find the area of a circle, I'd need to use pi and so it's irrational. <clears throat> All right, one last example. Let's say you want to go buy something really cool, like, I don't know, the new iPhone 11 Pro Max. Why not? And you need to borrow money from your parents to do it. What kind of subset of numbers would I be falling into if I'm having to borrow money? So if you just had to borrow like $300, that'd be like owing $300, negative $300. So I'd be in integers. But what if you were like, you only had $300 and you had to borrow the rest? Well, then you're going to owe some cents also. So then you'd be in rational numbers because it would be a decimal. I love real number land. Yeah, real numbers are great. I wonder if there's other numbers outside of real number land. No, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. Oh, this is imaginary. Imaginary is not part of the real number land. We don't go in imaginary land very often, but when we do, we have to know that I is square root of negative one. Anytime we try to even root a negative number, we're in imaginary land. So for now, don't worry too much about it. Just remember the real number land and all of the subsets. We'll come back to this.